Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Housewife Historian and we are here to talk the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm going to be talking a little bit in code today because if you watch my channel and you watch my live, yes. Is the plane going down? Are we going to die? Why are you saying I'm so weak? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Housewife Historian. Um, today we are going to be talking the Real Housewives of New Jersey, Teresa Judice, and her interview with Carlos King on the podcast. She also had her uh, side piece uh, podcast. Her name is Melissa as well. So Teresa and Melissa, not Melissa Gorga. Melissa from Side Piece have started their own podcast called Namaste Bitches. Okay, so um, they're on there probably to do some press uh, for that, but there's also a lot of information discussed as it pertains to the Real Housewives of New Jersey franchise. Okay, Carlos King was one of the top producers on the Real Housewives, not just New Jersey, but also Atlanta. He's made a name for himself, not only in the Bravo community, but as a producer all over. He was literally like the biggest producer on the biggest seasons rated throughout all of the franchises. Um, he's on seven out of 10. So they rated all of the franchises together and put together a list of top 10 seasons of all the franchises. I think they did episodes as well. And Carlos King was on, he was a producer on seven of those. So he goes into a little bit of detail and explains how they used to work production back then. Um, I thought you guys might be interested in hearing that. But before we get started, it's imp important um, that you guys remember everything in this video, of course, is alleged. If you could please go ahead and hit that like button. It really does make a difference with my videos. Um, you're going to want to subscribe. I have a lot of great interviews coming up this month. I've been working on um, getting some different unique people that you guys will enjoy. Hopefully, um, I'm going to interview for you guys. Damn it, I am looking for my piece of paper. I took notes on it and I cannot find it. Anyways, regardless, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn those notifications on, and all of you historians, gather around and let's talk New Jersey. Especially if you're a historian because we're talking old New Jersey, okay? Carlos King, Melissa F. is what I'm going to refer to her as. She's the slender blonde that we've seen with Melissa. They're doing a podcast together called Namaste Bitches. Carlos King was producer on the first franchise of Real Housewives in New Jersey, as well as the second um, year. I did I say second franchise? Second season. First and second season, Carlos was um, on the Real Housewives in New Jersey. So imagine the franchise is just starting out, okay? Here's some things that they talked about in the podcast that we may or may not have known. First of all, um, producers were assigned a housewife, okay? So all the producers had a specific housewife that they worked with. Carlos King worked with Teresa and Danielle. Now, they talk about Melissa and Joe, okay? And it does get a little bit emotional, and Carlos King is, is quick to kind of pip at the conversation. But a lot of information is given to us, and I'm going to give it to you guys, and I'm going to give it in an unbiased way as possible, and you guys can kind of make your own opinions from there. So Carlos King came out on the Heather McDonald podcast and announced that it was true. Melissa and Joe, Kathy Wakili and her husband did sign up and sign contracts for the Real Housewives of New Jersey without telling Teresa. She was updated a week before they were to film the christening. Now, if you guys have watched any of my old videos, then you will know that is exactly what I have said in my other videos happened, that she got a phone call. I always heard it was the night before the christening, um, but Carlos King alleges that it was a week before the christening. Andy Cohen called Teresa. And Teresa says, that's true. He called me like a week before and she's like, and he didn't want to get involved. And I understand that. Right. And she says, Carlos, you were telling me all through season one and two that my sister-in-law was like Facebooking you because Instagram didn't even exist then. Carlos like, yeah, she was messaging me all the time. And Teresa said that, see how naive I was? Teresa alleges that she 
was telling Kathy and Melissa everything that was going on about the show because she was filming. She was excited. She was letting them in, you know, through girl talk and everything. What all had trans, you know, was going on with the ladies. Okay. She was letting them in. She was telling them and they were secretly behind her back doing interviews and auditions with Bravo. Now, Kathy Wall Keeley always said that production told them not to tell Teresa and because they had never done the process before, they didn't know what to do. So they followed Bravo's advice and they didn't tell Teresa that they were interviewing for the show. Kathy Wakili has said that the discretion has always been between Melissa and Teresa. And like Teresa said, it was always her word against mine. So nobody knew who to believe. You know, we both had different stories. I did not know she was coming on the show, her and my brother until a week ahead of time. And Teresa alleges and Carlos King confirms that Teresa was very upset. She called Carlos. She was crying. She said, I don't want to fight with my family on national television. That makes sense, right? Because Dina and Dina ha- is the one who actually kind of put these ladies together, okay? A little bit of backstory. I think it was Dina and Teresa and Jacqueline that were all working at Macy's. That's how they all really got to know each other. And so when the, it came time to do the show, Dina is the one who introduced Teresa. And If you know, by season two, there was a lot of drama between Caroline, Dina, and Jacqueline and their family and everyone being on the show. And Dina stepped out of the show. And so Teresa watched what was going on with Caroline and their family, and she didn't want that to happen with her family. She said, look, we had a small family. It was my dad and his sister, which was Kathy's mom. So she said it was just the four of us. And when she says that, she means it was Teresa, Joe, Kathy, and Rosie. That's it. Just the four of them. And she said, I've lost my family to fame and and fortune. You know, like I was confiding in Jacqueline or I was confiding in Kathy and Melissa. And the whole time they were talking with producers behind without her knowing. Nobody told Teresa whether production told them not to tell. Regardless, Teresa felt like they let her spill her guts about everything that was going on with the the women that they were filming production everything and then took that and used it to um you know make their way onto the show Teresa also says um that again she's so thankful to be vindicated after all this time because it was just her word against Melissa's and so then she tells us that she never fully watched The Real Housewives of New Jersey this whole time, okay? And she tells us something really important, guys. She says she cannot believe the things that her brother and Melissa said about her in the confessionals. Now, I believe this. I believe that Teresa didn't really watch these episodes because if you watch the reunion, it's not uncommon that the women haven't watched the full episodes. Um the confessionals. And I think that Teresa just didn't want to, in my opinion, watch and see what was being said because she was trying to keep peace as it, you know, would keep her mother and father happy. And I do think she had a genuine love for her brother. And I think after she came home from prison, she probably just wanted to kind of forget about those couple of years and move forward. But She watched the episodes and now she knows what they've said about her. And I think that is what made her not want to have Melissa in her wedding. And I think that's why she was so stern about not having Melissa as a bridesmaid because she had went back, watched the seasons, right? Because Louie had watched all of the Real Housewives in New Jersey because he told us that. So he probably started to tell her what went down, what was in the confessionals, what was said, and she started to watch it herself and was like, oh, hell no, I'm not having this woman in my wedding. She also says, Carlos, she's like, Joey's saying that that my hus- my ex-husband, Joe, put my mother in a grave. She was like, he was, she's like, that's that not the case. She's like, the stress that my mother endured from her only two children not getting along took years off of her life. What do you guys think about that? Do you, I mean, that... Sounds like a logical statement. Um, You know, Teresa also tells us something else. She discloses that there's a woman named Lisa G who was her mother's good friend. 
She says that she treated her girls so good when Teresa was in prison, this woman, Lisa G., um, who was her mother's dear friend. She took the girls to New York City. They would stay at her apartment. She would take them and do all these different things with them when Teresa was in prison. And Teresa was like, I really respect and love her for that. And she said, I recently ran into her and spoke with her. And she talked to me about my mother. And she said that... So Lisa said that Teresa's mother told her that Joey flipped out of the christening because he wanted to be like Teresa. He saw how popular Teresa got after she flipped the table with Danielle. And so he went in with the intent to do something similar because he wanted to seal the deal for the show. And you know what, guys? I've listened to Melissa's podcast and her and Joe talk about the christening scene. And he says that producers were clapping and high-fiving after that happened because they said it was such great TV. That makes me a little suspicious. Don't you think? Do you guys, does that make you a little suspicious that producers are high-fiving, saying this is great TV, that you, you know, lost your mind at your son's christening in front of your whole family and your sister? So basically, Teresa tells Carlos King, I don't want my family to come on because I don't want to fight with them on national TV. And the first time they film together, Joe freaks out. It's the son's christening. It's this huge thing, right? So Teresa says, though, like, she sounds upset like her heart hurts you know like she she just sounds upset by hearing the things that were said I think by Joe and Melissa over the years in their confessionals and if you've forgotten you should definitely follow the love 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 Gabrielle account on Instagram she's always posting old clips from New Jersey um housewives and Again, I had another account, Kimba. She said, I went back and watched The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills starting with like season one and two. And she said, I cannot believe these women and like the difference between then and now and how much it really helps you to see how these women move if you go back and watch some of the older episodes. Because we forget we're busy in life and kids and families and jobs, whatever the case may be, guys, go back. I'm telling you, it is worth it. You will you will completely discover new things you had forgotten about that make sense. Again, that will help you understand why the housewives move the way they do. Specifics, that's all. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to come to you and give you a quick rundown again of Carlos King's podcast with Teresa. Um, I listened to it on Apple, of course. But um, they talked a little bit, like I said, about the podcast that Melissa and Teresa are doing, which is the Namaste Bitches. And um, she says it's, like, so funny because Melissa, the name Melissa, used to kind of, like, always make her cringe. And she says, like, now she has a great Melissa in her life that she loves so much, which is Melissa, the girl that that's a podcast with her. Last thing I want to tell you guys. Now, Teresa talks about this sprinkled cookie. She brings up the sprinkle cookies, and this is what she says happened. Teresa says they had like a get together Christmas or something like that. And Melissa brought these sprinkled cookies like in the plastic container. And she said it was actually Joe Judice's mom who was like, who brought these sprinkled cookies in the house with this plastic? And, um, she said, oh, it was your sister-in-law. She said it to Teresa. So Teresa said trying to be a good sister-in-law to Melissa because she said like they were kind of making fun of her. She went to Melissa and was like, hey, like if you're going to play the part, you know, if you're going to have the nice house and dress the kids and have the nice car, you know, yada, 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 then, you know, go to the bakery and get some real pastries you know, and Carlos is like, what do you mean? Like pl- to get on the show? Were you helping her? Get-? And he, she's like, no, I was just giving her like a life tip. Like if you're trying to sell us on your car and your home and your kids and your life and your husband, then don't come into people's house with like a plastic container with sprinkle cookies. Go to the baker and get some real pastries. Right. Makes, I mean, that made sense to me though, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, everyone can't be on a 10 and you come in with like a a number two, uh, you know, your cookies are two on the scale of one to 10, but everything else is a 10 plus, 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 right? So, um, just something to think about guys. Again, we're going to be seeing New Jersey in December because 
of everything going on with Beverly Hills and of course everyone patiently waiting for um this wedding this Teresa and Louie wedding this three-part series we're all patiently waiting for it and it wouldn't make sense for Bravo to air that before um the season airs they can't do it because this season's gonna lead up to the three-part series so guys make sure you comment let me know what you think um about New Jersey if you're gonna be watching and what your thoughts are on um, the relationship between Joe and his sister, Teresa. If you have any helpful hints that you think they could use to try to reconcile their relationship, comment. I want to see what you guys say. Um, I want to start reading some of your comments um, in my commentary as well. So there's going to be some changes coming up. I'm using a new streaming service. I felt so bad yesterday because I did a live. I had people in the live that were commenting and I thought I was live for like 15 minutes and I wasn't. So I was a little embarrassed, but I'm figuring it out. So no worries. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn your notifications on and we'll talk soon. Have a great day guys.